Thanks again, everyone, for joining today's webinar on performance testing with real browsers. We're harnessing the power of JMeter and Selenium WebDriver. I am Ophir Prusak, Chief Evangelist at BlazeMeter. And today's session, we're going to go over some um, slides at first, and then we'll go into an actual demo of the tool itself. So let's go ahead and get started. So in today's agenda, we're going to start with basically a quick overview of JMeter versus real browsers, how the two different things work, and ultimately, what are the pros and cons you need to know about how to test with JMeter versus real browsers. I'm going to show you how to install the JMeter WebDriver plugin itself to actually get started by using uh, WebDriver. Then we'll go into creating basic scripts. All of this will be done within JMeter itself. I'm going to show you how to create a multi-step script. Then we'll add, how do I add CSV files into my tests so I can ultimately test with dynamic parameters, such as, let's say, usernames and passwords. And then last but definitely not least, how we can generate load in the cloud using BlazeMeter if you want to generate very large amounts of load and very large numbers of traffic. So just a little about BlazeMeter for those of you who are not familiar with BlazeMeter. Uh, BlazeMeter is a complete solution for your performance testing needs. Uh, we do 100% backend application testing, whether that being a testing your website or API or the backend of a mobile device. Uh, we support both JMeter and WebDriver in terms of the different technologies you can use. It's a total self-service cloud in that once you get an account, you can provision whatever you want and run tests 24 hours a day if you want. And ultimately, by supporting open source technologies, that means uh, it's easy to find help if you need so. So again, API, mobile web, we do load and performance testing, and we can also test from the cloud as well as behind the firewall. So now going on to a little more about what are the actual differences between JMeter versus real browsers? And why until now it actually has been very difficult, if not possible, to do performance testing with real browsers. So this is an example of what JMeter looks like. Here's a JMeter interface. JMeter is the leading open source tool for performance testing. The way that JMeter works is that uh, you define within the tool itself the specifics of the request you want to make, and JMeter goes ahead and does so. On the other hand, we have a browser, and I don't need to show you what a browser looks like or, or how it works, but just to go over some of the high level overview of the differences. When I'm using a real browser, then what I'm doing in terms of defining the user scenario is I'm defining activity in terms of actual user actions, such as the user might enter a URL in the address bar, they might click on an element or enter some keystrokes, but I'm really looking at what the user is doing. And what the browser is doing, on the other hand, is they're, it's parsing the HTML, it might be executing some JavaScript, and it understands form logic. So when I actually hit the submit button on a form, it will take the contents of the form and then uh, create an HTTP request, which is takes all that content from the form and kind of conveys it into to one specific request and might put the post data and the post, et cetera. So that's how a real browser works. On the other hand, the way that JMeter works, and again, this is what JMeter looks like, is that JMeter is based mostly on HTTP requests, or I should say native JMeter. What we're going to go today is show you how to add WebDriver to JMeter in order to use real browsers. But out of the box, JMeter has, um, it, it creates HTTP request. And the activity is defined in terms of HTTP actions. So I can have an HTTP get, an HTTP post, JMeter does support cookies and caching. So even though it's just making requests, it knows how to take care of cookies. Again, it does a lot of actions which make it look or make it easier to emulate a real browser. And JMeter also has the concept of user variables. 
response data extraction with regular expressions and flow logic. So basically, I can simulate all the actions that a browser would do within JMeter itself. For instance, something like uh, dynamic authentication tokens, how to handle that through pulling in the response data, saving into a variable with a regular expression, and then ultimately passing that into another request. So you can do that in JMeter. You just need to add the logic yourself. But what JMeter does do is it doesn't execute most of the client-side logic within the browser. So while it will parse basic HTML, and by parsing basic HTML, I mean that if you have, let's say, an image within your page or a CSS file, which is included, then uh, JMeter does have the ability to say load those up as well. Uh, just to show you how that works within JMeter, for every request you have, every HTTP request, you have here at the bottom, retrieve all embedded resources. So if this is checked, basically it will retrieve the embedded resources from the HTML. But what it doesn't do is it won't execute the JavaScript on the page, and it doesn't understand form logic. So it doesn't actually take the contents of the page and do with it anything, or I should say it doesn't really take almost anything from the response. It's up to you to have to deal with that. So obviously the pros and the cons are, are quite clear. JMeter uh, is not as easy, to be honest, to write scripts as with you know, trying to simulate a real browser. But ultimately, the biggest difference, and this answers the question, well, why did people start using tools like JMeter? And, and similar tools you might have heard of, like LoadRunner and other tools for load testing, all of them use the same type of idea, uh, which is I'm going to simulate users because using real browsers is extremely resource intensive. And just how resource intensive is it to use real browsers? Well, if I'm using JMeter, uh, then I can get between 300 to 2,000 virtual users per server, which is pretty impressive. And by server, I mean, let's say, an 8 gigabyte RAM four core machine. I can get about 1,000 users. On the other hand, when I'm testing with real browsers, I'm looking at one to three virtual users per CPU core. That's orders of magnitude smaller. So that same 8 gigabyte four core machine can now just support four to 12 users. And that varies depending on how intensive your script is and how much wait time there is between requests. So while real browsers is definitely easier to script and I don't need to think what I'm doing, um, it doesn't scale to very, very large numbers. So if you need to run a test with 100,000 or maybe a million concurrent users, real browsers just won't cut it. On the other hand, if you need to run a test with maybe 50 concurrent users or 500 concurrent users or maybe even one to 2,000 concurrent users, it's actually doable if you're taking advantage of cloud-based resources because I can actually launch in the cloud now maybe 10, 50, 100, or even 1,000 concurrent servers to create that load. So that's kind of the pros and the cons of the two things. So once we have that aside, now let's see how we can actually run a test using the JMeter WebDriver plugin. What the JMeter WebDriver plugin does, and this is JMeter again, is it gives you the ability to write WebDriver code from within JMeter. And that WebDriver code will talk to a real browser on the same machine that JMeter is running and being able to execute it. Now, since JMeter is a tool which was built for performance testing, then you get all the goodies, such as what was response time and stuff like that in terms of uh, running the test. So let's look at, and go ahead and see how you actually install it in the first place. So I'm not going to go over the specifics of installing JMeter. That's pretty standard. You go to the JMeter website and download it. In terms of installing the JMeter WebDriver plugin, so what you actually want to do is go to jmeter-plugins.org. And here I can show you jmeterplugins.org. Here's the website. They have all sorts of cool third-party plugins, but specifically, we're going to look at the WebDriver set. So I can click on WebDriver set. This gives me a little more information about it. And if I click on download, I can actually download this zip file and I can put it on my machine. Now, when I store it on my machine and open it up, what you're going to see is a list of files that you need to put within your 
JMeter directories. So you're going to see a lot of jar files. Put them into the lib and lib ext directories. Uh, it'll make sense when you actually take a look at the files. Uh, let me actually see if I have it here. We'll look at the files within the directory tree. There we go. I can actually show you this. And here's what it looks like. So you can see within, I can go back to here. You can see within, so this is my JMeter directory. I opened up the plugins web driver to this directory. And there's a lib and an ext with some jars. And this is the same lib and ext of JMeter itself. So I simply need to copy all of these files into the correct lib and ext files here. One thing you need to be aware of, and this is a big gotcha, is that when you copy the files over, you're going to have two different versions of HTTP jars. Uh, older ones and newer ones. In order for the WebDriver plugin to work, you need to delete the older ones. So delete the HTTP client 426 and core and mine. So delete the older versions, just keep the newer versions. Otherwise, the WebDriver plugin isn't going to work. And once the WebDriver plugin, uh, all those installed, you restart JMeter. And you're going to see now, if I go ahead and let's say uh, do, let's say, file. Uh, I can just show you it here. You're going to see now within the ability of creating a test, if I go here, and again, this, I'm not going to go over the specifics of uh, uh, the specifics of JMeter, but if you go here under thread group, you can now do add, and you should see under config element, you should see some elements. They all start with JP at GC. That's uh, JMeter plugins, Google code. But you can see all these Chrome driver config, Firefox driver config, and all these config elements. These are all the configuration elements in terms of creating WebDriver tests. And these define, ultimately, what browser you're going to use. Now, out of all these different browsers, the Firefox one is the easiest to use and install. Uh, it should take you just a few seconds. The other ones definitely work. But I'm not going to go over them for two reasons. First of all, they are more complicated and more complex to work. Uh, and secondly, if we want to run this in the cloud and we'll be using BlazeMeter, uh, BlazeMeter for now supports the Firefox driver config. So if I want to run large tests in the cloud, I want to make sure that it runs in Firefox uh, opposed to the other systems. Now, I also want to remind you, running load tests or running tests in the cloud with WebDriver, it isn't meant to replace a service, let's say, like Sauce Labs, which allows you to test a site against 50, 100, or 500 different OS and, and browser and device configurations. This is purely meant either to create load in the first place or to monitor what the real user experience is like while it's under load with JMeter. So it shouldn't really matter what browser you're using. And again, we're going to show the Firefox config. Uh, the other element, and we'll show you that in a second, if you go under thread group that you should see after you add the plugins under samplers, is something called the web driver sampler. And this is the actual sampler where you copy and paste, or I should say you put your web driver code. So now let's go ahead and bring up a, an example of a simple script. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a thread group. I'm going to add the Firefox driver config. One thing you should also be aware of is you do need to have Firefox also installed in your local machine, obviously. Uh, the official documentation of the web driver says that Firefox 26 works. Later versions are not guaranteed. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes they don't. When I do testing, I prefer to actually test on Firefox version 26 just to make sure it works. We're going to add the sampler and the web driver sampler. We're going to add the web driver sampler. We're going to enter some web driver code. We're going to add a few listeners for debugging. And then we're going to simply run the test. So let's bring in, here is an example, here we go, of a simple uh, web driver. So let me go ahead and under test plan, what I did was I went to add threads. I added a thread group. And here's the thread group that I added some users. Also, you should always test with one user initially. Otherwise, things get really, really messy. Uh, I also added here under test plan, I went to add config element in the Firefox driver config. 
here's the one that I just added. I can go ahead and actually delete this one because I already have it here. Uh, there's really nothing to define here. There are some things you can define, but you shouldn't have to define anything. And then under my thread group, I went and did add sampler and I did web driver sampler and I get something like this. And as you can see, it's just basically a big box. That's all it is because what they expect you to do is go copy and paste your web driver code. Now, for those of you who, um, for those of you who don't know what web driver code looks like, let's go ahead and take a look at a sample. So I have a really, really simple sample. Uh, basically, uh, this is what web driver code looks like. This specifically is, uh, this JavaScript code in terms of the language that it's being used, but it uses commands like get and click and key press, etc. Now, the only other two things you need to be aware of in terms of uh, creating simple scripts are, first of all, there's some hard-coded naming conventions in terms of how you access the actual uh, elements. Uh, in this case, you can see it even says the follow variables are defined, WDS, parameters, name, args, logs, etc. If you go to uh, these tutorial pages, yeah, and I'll go back really quick in my browser. If you go back to the tutorial pages, for instance, here, the web driver sampler introduction, it's a great introduction. I'm not going to go over all of this, but basically it goes over the specifics of what naming conventions you need to use. Uh, it goes a little more about debugging, browser specifics. I'm not gonna go over all of this, but I will say that it's a great place to go if you kind of want to get into the more nitty gritty. Uh, we also have the two minute tutorial that also tells you kind of basically what we're talking about today. And we're just going to get started with this, you know, sample start, get, and sample result. So going back now to JMeter, there you go. Uh, I have a sample start and a sample end. So these are the only things you need to be aware of in terms of, well, what's really, really different about doing testing with WebDriver on JMeter, let's say, versus just doing normal testing with WebDriver. So within the cool uh, realm of testing with WebDriver, the whole concept of how long did it take for this page to load uh, doesn't really exist if you think about it. Mostly WebDriver is being used to test functionality. Did a specific string appear or you know, did the result happen like it wanted it to happen? So what we need to do is add at the beginning of the script sample start. That simply means start the timer. Then I do whatever activity I want to do. It can be load a page or fill in some form elements, etc. And then I do sample end, which means finish it. And then the time that it took from sample start to sample end, that's how long it took for this request. Or if you think about it, it could be, let's say, you know, whatever it is you want to time, you could actually have the sample start only be after the page load, and you actually want to see how long it takes for a specific uh, JavaScript element to actually happen or, or whatever. So you can actually have this start and end anywhere within the script you want. I like to keep it simple really at the beginning of the end of each script. So here you go. I have the sample start and sample end. I'm going to delete this one here a second. And the other thing you need to be aware of is that the name of the sampler, that's what will appear in your reports. So in this case, it's search because it's a search page that I wanted. Uh, but you can see it's very, very simple. And I've added two samplers. So if I go right click on users, I need to add listener, sorry, two listeners. Listeners in JMeter are what you use in order to see results. So I've added the view results in table and tree, and this is great for debugging. So let's go ahead. Uh, I have one user, five loops, um, and I'll go ahead and hit start. So I'm gonna hit start when oh, I have a constant timer of one second delay between requests. So let's go ahead and in a second, I'll show you how to handle more complex apps or, or multi-page or single page apps are also kind of multi-steps. This is just the simple script just to show how easy it is. So I'm gonna hit play. Now I'm right now using a dual monitor solution. So I know from experience, the second I hit play, Firefox is gonna start up on my second window and I'll really quick move it up to here just so you can see it. Just one second. And here it is, voila. So here it is. 
And so that was kind of quick, actually. It was kind of quick. It's so quick, I couldn't even, sorry, bring it up here uh, in terms of how quick it was. Uh, so let's go ahead and actually show you something which is a little more steps. But basically, what, you're, what I'm seeing in the browser is it's bringing up the page and then just closing the browser again. So it actually starts up the browser every time, gives it a fresh session every time. Uh, but what I can see here in the view results tree and the view results table, I can actually see in the tree, here's the, the request and here's the response data. Now for the request, since I'm using the WebDriver plugin, I don't get too much information about the request since it's all happening kind of within the WebDriver plugin. This is unlike raw JMeter or native JMeter where I can get a lot more information about the request. I just know it's the sampler, but in the response data, I can actually see here is the actual response itself. And you know, it, it, you can see that it's working. These are all green because they all worked fine. And in table, I can see the actual sample time. So the first time it took a little longer and the other requests I can see uh, were a little faster. But that's really the, the very simple user case scenario. And what I probably want to do is a slightly more complex user case scenario. So for the case of the slightly more complex user case scenario, we're going to use the simple travel agency or blazedemo.com. This is a very simple application where there's some activity which is filling out a form, there's some activity which is choosing elements from pull downs. So let's say I get to the first page and I go and I choose some elements from the pull down. I click on a button and then I click on another button to choose this flight and then get a form in the form. I'm just gonna put like my information and at the bottom, I have, a, again, a button for purchase flights. And at the end, I get a nice confirmation page. So this is a simple demo app that we're going to show you how to actually implement this within your WebDriver script. So going back to WebDriver, that was the simple example. And let's now go ahead and bring up the more, more extensive ex example. So. And for multi-step scripting, what we're gonna do basically is just add more WebDriver samplers. And it's important to know that each sampler continues the same session. So basically, whatever I did in the previous sampler, it's the same browser session. I don't need to load everything from scratch, et cetera. And also, each thread iteration is a new session. So let me actually bring up, I think if I bring up the actual test itself, it'll be a little easier to understand. Here we go. So here's the actual test itself where I have a multi-step. So this is the, the checkout process, or I should say the simple travel agency version. So on the first page, again, it's the same uh, uh, Firefox configuration. I'm going to show you later on how to deal with the CSV stuff. But the first page, again, it's just go to blazedemo.com. Uh, you should also notice, and I forgot this beforehand, that I'm also creating um, a variable called pkg, which has some functionality which I might want to use later. Uh, this is a Selenium library. So you can just copy and paste it as is. And then on the next page, you can see again, I have sample start. And here I'm using actual web driver commands. And I'm now using the pkg basically variable. So again, it's browser find element, CSS selector from port is Boston, and I want to click on it and then find element to port because balloon click. And then I need to find the button, which is find flights, and I'm gonna click on that. So if I go really quick back to here, the home page, where there's a from and there's a to and there's a find flights. Now, one of the things that very often you might ask yourself is how do I create the locators, what's called, for those specific elements? You know, ideally, if an element has a ID tag, within the element, that's the easiest way to do it. But if not, there's a few other ways. One of the ways is if you right click on an element, and this is in Internet Explorer. If I do inspect element, I can take a look at the actual element itself here. This is the select element. And I can see there's a name for the element from port. Aha, so I can definitely take advantage of the name of this element. Uh, if I had an ID, I could take advantage of the ID. And here I can see, sorry, here I can see that the select name equals from port. So that's how I'm actually selecting the name. 
Uh, I'm not going to go into the specifics of the different selectors. There's a CSS selector. There's something called an XPath collector, as well as just by ID. Uh, you can just do a generic search for uh, a generic web driver tutorial and explain you how to uh, how to find these selectors. Uh, additionally, there are tools out there such as uh, Selenium Builder and Selenium IDE, which allow you to create a script. Uh, those scripts are usually output in other languages, but it's usually very, very simple to make small modifications just in terms of a naming convention to get it to also work for a JMeter WebDriver plugin. So here you have, again, the search, choose city. Uh, here is the form field. Uh, again, I'm doing, you know, uh, submit for the form. Now I'm looking for, I'm waiting for a specific element purchase flight. Sometimes you're going to have elements which don't immediately appear when the page loads and you have to wait for them. So you can have a wait command. And then I'm simply sending in some keys to the specific uh, elements of the form. If you remember, there was a form, I'm just kind of passing in some send key elements. One thing which is a big gotcha is uh, that you need to make sure that the strings are in square brackets, like here. Uh, you might notice that locally on your machine, it will work even within this without the square brackets for the send keys. But if you run this on BlazeMeter, it won't work without the square brackets. Uh, that's just a question of uh, differences in uh, in conventions of let's say Java versions. So going on, uh, and then I have the confirmation page. On the confirmation page, I'm actually uh, looking for a specific element to make sure that appears. Thank you for your purchase. And again, I have the constant timer. So let's go ahead and again, we're gonna run this with just one user, five loops. And now that I have a few different steps of the form, actually, let me enable this one. Let me just do this to enable, and I'll do this one to disable and you'll understand why in a second. There we go, and I'm gonna hit run. And this time I should have enough time to actually bring up the browser window. Here we go. See it's happening. And also WebDriver appears here at the bottom. So it went through all the, and that was it. And it's actually doing that five times now since I have it set for five loops. It's filling out everything for me. This is working great. And at the same time, I can also look at JMeter. I can see here are the actual results in the tree. Every time a different Request comes in and I can look in the table to get an idea of the actual response times. So far, so good. If I go back to my deck a second, let me see how we're doing. Uh, each sample can the same session and each thread iteration is a new session. But now I'm saying to myself, well, all of this is great, but I want to simulate, let's say, you know, 500 different people logging in to my website and I need different usernames and passwords for each one of those. So what we can do is add within JMeter what's called a standard CSV dataset config element. And I'll show you that right here. And then variables within my script, I simply reference them as dollar and the variable name. So here's a CSV file. Remember that form I had to fill out with first name, like name, address, zip code, etc. Let's go ahead and take a look. Here is a CSV file that I created beforehand. And in the CSV file, the first line I'm putting are the names of the variables. So it's going to be name, address, city, state, and zip. And here is all the data. It's uh, kind of 100 lines of data. And I simply do dollar name and the name of the variable in order to access it. So now let's look again at my script. And this time I'm going to enable this element and disable this element. Basically, it's a copy of the same element. In one of them, I have the element hard, the data hard coded, as you can see here. And in this one, I'm passing in the data as a variable for name, address, city, state, and zip. So these are the names of the variables, and they're taken from the first line of the CSV file. And in order to tell JMeter in the first place that I'm going to be using a CSV file, I've added what's called a CSV, CSV dataset config file. So in order to do that, again, it's a right click in the test plan, add config element, CSV dataset config. 
here it is. I already have one. And all I need to do is add this, the name of the file called form underscore data.csv. Now, one thing you should be aware of when running tests both locally and from the cloud, if you do use a path name, so if I were to do, let's say, users slash Ophir slash that, this wouldn't work if I uploaded it to the cloud because that path name doesn't exist. So I should always put my JMeter scripts and my CSV files in the same directory locally. So when I upload them to the cloud and I upload them uh, in the cloud, BlazeMeter puts them in the same directory so that way it'll look in the right place. So here I have my CSV data set config. Let me actually remove this element. And now let's run the same script, this time using data from a CSV file. So I can take a look at the results. And by the way, Command E on a Mac, uh, I forget what it is on a PC, will basically reset all the data and clear it out. Let's go ahead and hit the Start button. And again, I'll take the browser once it comes up. And I will put it here so you can see it. And this time, if you look really, really closely, you can see that every time it comes up, the actual data that's coming up is going to be different in terms of what's passed into the form. Again, I'm bringing it up. And alternatively, this could be not only the form elements, this could be elements in terms of what you're choosing, in terms of clicking on, or, or whatever it should be. So that's how, you, how easy it is to do this within a form. So now that we understand how to do this within a form, uh, sorry, CSV file, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the next step, which is generating load with BlazeMeter. So BlazeMeter is a, <coughs> excuse me, it's a cloud-based uh, performance testing provider. Uh, we started just by giving you the ability to run JMeter tests in the cloud, uh, especially if you need to generate large amounts of loads. We have users who are generating uh, upwards of a million concurrent users. And by using JMeter with just a couple of boxes, you're not gonna reach that. So we have clients which are testing upwards of a thousand concurrent servers per test, and that's upwards of a million concurrent users. Uh, but especially when you wanna generate load with WebDriver, uh, just doing it with one user isn't enough. Now, when I played around with this on my MacBook Pro, I was able to reach uh, somewhere around 10 concurrent users before it basically reached 100% CPU and my machine got really slow. Uh, and ultimately, I'm not getting the correct results. So two things you need to be aware of in terms of when you are running multiple browsers in parallel um, in order to generate load. Uh, first of all, the wait time between requests has a huge impact on how many browsers you can run per server. So when I initially ran the tests, I didn't have any wait time between requests. Uh, and basically, the server was only able to hit one browser per CPU core before it hit 100%. On the other hand, if you have a more realistic wait time between requests, because in actuality, people are going to wait a little between page load to page load, let's say something like 10 or 15 seconds, uh, then I was able to hit you know, a lot more browsers per machine without hitting 100% CPU. And the reason you really don't want to hit 100% CPU on the load generators is because you're not going to get accurate results in response times. If the machine is at 100% CPU, then what in actuality might have been, let's say, a 500 millisecond response time might look like a 800 or 900 second millisecond response time because the machine itself is busy. So now let's look at the steps. So having said all that, let's look at the steps and run an actual test on BlazeMeter. So the first thing, and this is crucial, you need to create the script and debug it locally. If you don't create the script and make sure it works locally, you're gonna be pulling hairs out to see why it doesn't work on BlazeMeter. Because while BlazeMeter works great, you're not gonna get the same level of debugging features as you would locally. And not to mention, you do have to wait a couple of minutes when you run a new test. In terms of a few things you should be aware of when running tests on BlazeMeter is that BlazeMeter currently is running on our backend WebDriver 1.12. It's a slightly older version, but a little more stable. 
Um, it's fine for, for performance testing using uh, real web browsers, but just something you should be aware of. We're also using Firefox browsers for web driver tests with Phantom JS and Chrome support coming soon. So after I've uploaded and set load parameters, I can run the test and then for errors, I will check the log files. So let's go ahead and do so. Let's log into my trusty old blaze meter. There we go. And, uh, oh, one other thing I forgot from beforehand, I'm just looking at some of my tabs. Uh, in terms of resources, we also have an awesome blog entry from uh, a couple of months ago, which really talks about some of the more gotchas you need to be aware of, of the WebDriver sampler. So let's go ahead now and look at creating a new WebDriver test. So within BlazeMeter, you actually have two different options to create a WebDriver test. The first option is you can use the specific web driver test type. Uh, the main advantage of using the web driver test type, <coughs> excuse me, uh, is that it's a lot easier to edit, but also you can run with more users. So if I do add new web driver test, what you're gonna see here is that I can simply give the sampler a name, let's say, home page, I click on edit code. And here I literally copy and paste the code from my JMeter test or that I created in JMeter. So here is, let's say the code from here. I simply copy this, command C. I go back to here, command V and hit apply. And now I can do this, you know, this is gonna be uh, page two edit code, and again, I go into, this is choose city, copy, and paste, apply. So I already did this previously. Let's go ahead and take a look at a test that I created. Here's my WebDriver Blaze Demo version two. I already have the search, the choose city, the form, et cetera, and all the different elements in the confirm page, yeah? Uh, I already have that set up. And now I want to define how many users and how many engines per user. So let's say I want to actually test, can the tra simple travel agency website, can it handle, you know, let's say 200 concurrent users using real browsers? Uh, and I can go back to here. And in order to reach 200 users, I'm gonna put here 200. And just one second. Yeah, okay, so instead of doing 200 users, what I'm gonna now do is tell it to run with, uh, let's say, actually I wanna do 21. I know for a fact that these, uh, the machine, oh, sorry, this is the wrong one. I don't want this one. This is the one I just was playing around with. Here we go, I want this one, thank you. So here's the WebDriver Blaze demo version two. Uh, and I wanna test with, let's say just 15 users per machine. And I wanna test with, let's say 20 machines. Now the fact that I can run this with 20 machines is because the account that I'm running with is an enterprise account. Uh, depending on the specifics of your account, uh, free accounts can only run a test with one machine and just five users because it's a pretty small machine and only has four CPU cores. Paid accounts can run tests with up to 20 users per machine because it's running on machines which are much more powerful with 16 CPU cores. Uh, I'm gonna keep it 15 just to kind of keep it on the safe side. So it's a total of 300 users with 20 engines with a ramp up of, uh, let's give it, well, let's give it a quick ramp up of just five minutes just to kind of get to the point, a duration of 10 minutes of the test. And this is a delay between requests. We'll leave it the default for 10 seconds. I'll go ahead and hit save. And I'll hit start. Launch servers. So what's happening now is that BlazeMeter in real time is going to the cloud and launching the 20 servers in the cloud in order to run the test. Once the servers are up and running, what will happen is that BlazeMeter will distribute the 
JMeter code with a web driver and everything that it needs to and actually run this, this test on all servers in parallel, BlazeMeter will then in real time aggregate the data from all of the servers uh, into a single report and basically kind of give you the ability to see what's happening uh, as if it was just one kind of humongous machine. So from the user's perspective, it doesn't matter if you're running a test on a single machine or if you're running a test on you know, 20, 50, or even 500 machines, it's totally transparent to you. So while we're waiting for this to come up, because like I said, it does take a couple of minutes uh, for the data to actually start appearing and for the uh, machines to boot up, let's go ahead and take a look at a report using the exact same parameters as I just ran here. So here is, this is the multi, this is, wait a second. Okay, so actually, you know what? I don't see the one I'm looking for, so let's go ahead and bring it up right now. And if I click here on, wait a second, on test. So I click on test, here's WebDriver Blaze demo version two. And if I wait a few seconds, I can see all the times that I ran this in the past. And let's go ahead and take a look. Let's say I ran this a few times earlier today. Let's take a look at this one, for instance. Okay, so here you can see that I ran this test with 150 virtual users. Uh, this is a high level overview. I'm not gonna go into the specifics of all the reporting, uh, but you can see in terms of how many hits per second I had, response time, etc. And if I go to the load report, you can also see how the real response time went up as I was increasing the number of users. And see, it seemed to go all over the place, but again, I'm looking at a per minute average. One other thing that I want to show you right now as we're waiting for the uh, test to start is since I also have on the web pages that I'm testing, I have Google Analytics installed, I can see in real time what's happening on the website in terms of how many active users and how many hits per second I'm getting. So this is great in terms of kind of a third party confirmation since again, I'm using real browsers and I have on the page Google Analytics tag, I'm gonna be hitting those Google Analytics requests just as if I was a real user. Now, since every iteration, every time I loop through those kind of four steps, it starts the browser from scratch, it will look like a brand new user. That's why it looks like there's so many active users. Basically, it's just users looping over and over again. But I can already see that I'm around almost, I don't know, like 25 hits per second. And as we increase the number of users over time, this number is just gonna go up. So this is great just in terms of confirmation to see what's actually happening. Now going back to, sorry, going back to the report that I was looking at beforehand, I think it was this one. Here we go, this was the one with 150 users. I can, again, immediately see initially I had a nice low response time, but then the response times was going up, as to be honest, would be expected uh, in terms of uh, you know a website that I can see this specific website, I can't handle that many users. Uh, it does seem to be a little variation up and down. That's probably because uh, I'm looking at an aggregate of all the different pages. If I look at the individual pages separately, I'll probably see a different picture as I would have expected. And here I can see some of the pages were pretty flat in terms of response times, while other pages I can see really, really went up in terms of response times. So I'm not gonna go in and, and kind of dig any deeper, but you can see this is a test, as I said, using 150 browsers in parallel, <coughs> excuse me, using 150 browsers in parallel to actually create the load. And since I was able to slowly increase the load over time, I could see what the response time was like over time. I can also look at things like the aggregate report, which will show me the data uh, in kind of an Excel spreadsheet format in terms of you know hits per second, errors, et cetera, for each of the pages. Uh, again, I'm not gonna go into all the specifics of BlazeMeter, but just to show you how easy it is to run a test uh, when you are, you know, want to create the load from the cloud. Now, another common user case scenario in terms of using real browsers for performance tests is I might say, well, I don't wanna actually create the load 
from using real browsers because I want to test 10,000 concurrent users and I just don't have the horsepower to do so. But what I do want to do is I want to use a JMeter script to generate the load on the server and then use a web driver script to measure the actual response times of a real browser. Really cool. So in order to do so, we have something called a multi-test in BlazeMeter. And I've already created in advance two different types of tests. One is the web driver version, which takes a look at the simple travel agency. And one is a pure JMeter implementation. Remember beforehand we looked at here? Here is a pure JMeter implementation of going to the search for a flight, reserve a flight, purchase and confirmation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run both of them in parallel by going to add, it's called a multi-test. And the multi-test allows me to take individual tests and run them together. So first of all, I want to take the web driver. You know, I can actually show you how I created the multi-test in the past because I did this earlier today. So the multi-test that I created in the past is basically has two parts of it. One of them, this is a JMeter test with a script that I created, which just tests the Blaze demo site. This has 200 users with so a ramp up of 10 minutes. And then I have another test with just four users, this is a web driver test. And since I'm running them in parallel, those four users are basically acting kind of as, you know, just a measuring of what's the actual user experience like. And if I go to here to sessions, I can look at a session that I ran earlier today of this actual test. And actually, let's go to reports here. Just a second, it'll be a little clearer if I do it this way. Here we go. So here's the test. Now, in this view that I'm showing you, it's showing the results both from the JMeter data and from the WebDriver data aggregated. So it's a little, uh, a little kind of complex to understand what's going on. Yeah. Uh, you can see though that the load versus hits per second is going up and back down. You can also see the response times was originally pretty flat. And then around 130 users, I can see the response times start to shoot up. But if I want to look at the, oh, there are errors running all the tests that might have failed it. Don't worry about that. Uh, but if I want to look at the individual reports, here is, and I already have this here, here is the report if I want to see uh, for users who are running JMeter. And I also have the report for users who are running the web driver version. So let me actually go ahead and copy paste this. So this was 200 virtual users and, oh, let me go ahead back to reports. And here's the web driver part. So here I can see again, if I go just to these 200 users, so it's 200 users uh, creating load with JMeter and four users, which were just uh, measuring the load of the browser. Here I can see initially it was flat at around 120 users, the response time started to shoot up. Uh, and there were upwards of like 10 seconds even. Now, when I look at the four users and look at the load report for just the four users, I can see the same thing ultimately in terms of, well, the response time here I can see uh, was pretty flat. And then the response times go up uh, on average a little higher. So overall it's the same picture, but here I can get much more accurate response times in terms of all the pages. But what's interesting here is when I dig in a little deeper, I can see what looks like some of the pages were probably cached and some of them weren't. Because response times for the home page they shoot up really, really, really high all the other pages stay kind of low. So again, I'm not gonna go into all the specifics of slicing and dicing the data and the reports, but I just wanted to show you ultimately how you can go create uh, web driver tests within JMeter in the first place, run them, debug them locally, and even run them just for kind of one or two users on your own machine. And then how easy it is to go and add a new web driver test to run them in the cloud. So at this point, I am going to open it up to questions. Let me go back here to our slides. There we go. Um, 
A few things also just in terms of generating the load of blaze meter, as I said beforehand, free users can use one machine up to five browsers, paid accounts you can use up to 20 browsers per server, more or less simply because it's 16 core machines. And enterprise accounts can run up to a thousand servers depending on your plan. So we do have users where you're testing like low thousands of users uh, in terms of WebDriver tests. So if you do want more information, by the way, you can either check out our blog, send an email to info at blazemeter.com, or go ahead and just sign up for a free account at Blazemeter. Um, and now we're gonna have some time for some Q&A. One thing which I'll say already is that today's session is being recorded and I will send you the recording within 24 hours. So now it looks like we have a long, long list uh, of tests. So uh, somebody has mentioned, it's an excellent question. There's, there's a, a video out there which talks about Selenium Builder and in the Selenium Builder, there's an option which says export to BlazeMeter. Uh, that's currently in beta. You, you should contact us if you want more information about that. I'll tell you already that what it really does is simply uh, take the Selenium Builder commands and simply export them in the WebDriver format that WebDriver uses. Uh, you can do the exact same thing manually if you simply know the format. Um, I usually use tools which can export to Java and then slightly change the naming conventions. Uh, is the uh, today's session going to be recorded? Uh, yes. Uh, so somebody also asks, is our version of JMeter in the cloud that we run the same as the version of the open source JMeter? Yes, uh, that's definitely the, the same version. We actually, not only do we run JMeter out of the box in terms of our underlying engines, but BlazeMeter is also a contributor to the JMeter project itself. Uh, we have a few people on staff who are contributors to the project uh, simply because we want to give back. Uh, so somebody asks, that's an excellent question. How, okay, so how does JMeter handle generating load on applications that don't allow simultaneous logins for the same user credentials? Uh, so we already talked about the need to have a CSV file. So we supported that. One other thing which I want to show you here really quickly is within the JMeter interface, if BlazeMeter interface, if I go and add a new, uh, actually I think it'll only work in a JMeter test. If I, if I go to a JMeter test, and one thing which I also just realized uh, is that when I showed you the WebDriver test, that specifically, and we're still working on it, won't work if you have a CSV file. If you want to run a test with a CSV file, you'd need to create a quote unquote normal JMeter test by simply uploading the JMeter script that you have uh, locally. So here we go, here is for instance, the JMeter test uh, that I created. And I would also need to upload the CSV file as well. Here's the CSV file. Uh, and I could go ahead and run it. Now, keep in mind that when you're running a JMeter test, you're only going to get a four CPU core machine. So obviously you can't create the same amount of load. We are working on an update to the WebDriver test so you can also upload additional files. But just, I want you to be aware that if you were to push users, yes, you can push users to 100 or even 500. I guarantee you, if you do try to do more than 10 or 15 per machine, it's just gonna die. It's gonna crash because it's 100% CPU. But what I wanted to show you is this split CSV option. And the reason we have a split CSV option is imagine you're running a test with, uh, just one second. So imagine you're running a test and on that test, it's split across 10 machines and each machine has 50 users. Since you don't want the same user logging in for multiple machines at the same time, BlazeMeter, if this is checkmarked, can automatically identify a CSV file and split it round robin style into multiple files so each load generator would get its own file. Uh, next question, there's a question, is JavaScript the only language supported? Can we also use the WebDriver code written in Java? Uh, for now, it is JavaScript. You, if you go to the official JMeter plugins website and look more at the documentation, uh, it'll give you a lot more information than you know for the specifics. One other great thing is there's a support forum on the JMeter plugin website where people ask a lot of great questions about all of the plugins that they have, including the web driver samplers. Uh, 
So somebody asked, well, what about really complex web driver scripts where I have my own language already written in, let's say, Ruby or Python? How do I deal with that? Uh, the short answer is you can't really add your own Python or Ruby logic. You could add any logic you want within JavaScript. So you could definitely add some logic in terms of the web driver script. Uh, I just want to, again, point out this isn't meant to replace running web driver for functional testing. It's really meant in order to create load. Uh, next question, would this work for single page apps? Yes, it should definitely work for single page apps where the page loads and then the DOM manipulations happen. Uh, all the steps that I that I showed you in kind of step one, step two, step three, uh, there's nothing stopping you from having that simply be on the same page. You can have click something, wait for an element to appear. Once it appears, click on something else. So it definitely has no problem with client side, uh, with single page apps. Uh, so there's also a question, is time measured for sample start and sample end client side only or end to end journey? Uh, it's end-to-end -end journey, and I should say uh, it depends on really where you put the sample start and sample end. If you put the start before you load the page and you put the end, let's say, wait until a specific element appears on the page or something like that, it's going to truly be end-to-end. -end. Uh, excellent question. Uh, is there a recorder to generate scripts for those who are lazy? So there is an open source project. Uh, there's a couple of them. There's one called Selenium Builder. Selenium Builder, and you might have seen actually a video that shows somebody exporting from Selenium Builder directly into BlazeMeter. I can even show you what that looks like. Uh, this is currently an internal beta, uh, where if I go to launch Selenium Builder, and I have now an option here, which it says, uh, let's do Selenium 2, and then I have file. You'll notice I have export to BlazeMeter. Uh, that's currently in beta, but if you do go, let's say it is to export, yeah? Uh, actually, let me, let me go through a few steps just to show you this, for instance. Find flights. Okay. And if I do now go back to here and I do stop recording, file, export, you'll notice there's a few different uh, formats. If you go to Java export, it's really, really close to the web driver format in uh, JMeter uses, and you just need to change some names around, and it'll work fine. So that's that's what you can do for now until we get this added beta. Uh, a few more questions. What about HTTP authorization or pop-up windows? Uh, that's an excellent question. You know what? I'd have to get back to you. I'm not quite sure how HTTP, if, if it's native kind of, you know, HTTP auth, which is uh, kind of like the old school Apache's type, or basic auth, I'm not sure how that's that's done. That's an excellent question. But obviously, if this is authentication, which is done within your application, uh, it should be totally uh, work. Uh, so again, people are asking, well, what if I have this written in another programming language? At the moment, we only support what the web driver script supports. Uh, what's the max load that you can support? Oh, excellent question. Uh, so. The, the short answer is I don't know because we've never hit a limit that we have that our client has asked that we haven't been able to hit. Specifically, we do have users who are doing Selenium web driver based testing with low thousands. Uh, if you were to tell me 50,000, I would probably say you should really do that in JMeter and not with the Selenium web driver. Uh, but definitely, I would say we can safely hit the low thousands. Again, there is definitely a price associated though with tests which are that large. Uh, and for how long a test can be executed? For as long as you want. I mean, we have people who are doing tests uh, up to 72 hours, but again, you should talk to sales in terms of the specifics between our kind of enterprise features and our standard features. Uh, just to, to reiterate in terms of the maximum load that you can support, if you're doing a JMeter test, we can support upwards of a million concurrent users. Uh, ah, so another question, what happens if I choose, let's say, number of users and I don't split between engines and threads, yes, BlazeMeter will automatically decide on engines and threads based on best practices. You can always override that, but BlazeMeter will do that. Uh, Multi-location, so excellent question about can BlazeMeter run tests from multiple geographic locations at once? The answer is yes, of course. So I could actually take this test right here, 
Uh, I can either click on multi-location, which is an enterprise feature, or I could create what's called a multi-test, take the same test and simply each one of those have from a different geographic location. So you'll notice here in terms of geographic locations, there's quite a few of them that we support. Uh, we support all the major cloud providers, that being Amazon, Google, HP, Rackspace, as well as some of the smaller ones of DigitalOcean and Joyent. Uh, and we're not going to go into specifics, but yes, we support running tests for multiple geos. Uh, how can you see the test browsers when the test is running? Unfortunately, you can't. They're running in the cloud, uh, and you can't actually see them running. Uh, what about using BlazeMeter for testing Node.js apps? Uh, I can't say for sure if we do or don't have customers doing that. I will say for a fact that I have done some testing of a Node.js app purely in JMeter, so it works fine. I don't know if anybody's doing that with Selenium testing, though, to be honest. Uh, what about Angular.js? Again, uh, it doesn't really matter what technology you're using if it's JMeter. It's definitely, uh, you, can, you can test it with JMeter as well as with Selenium WebDriver. Uh, another question about, uh, what about this? Ah, is it the same source IP for all the virtual users? That's an excellent question. Uh, it's one source IP per server or per load generator. So if I run a test with, let's say, 20 load generators, it'll be 20 source IPs. If I run a test with 100 load generators, it'll be 100 source IPs. And if I run a test with just one load generator, it will be one source IP. Uh, can we use JMeter and WebDriver for functional testing? The short answer is you could, though I don't think it would be the best usage of JMeter WebDriver, to be honest. Uh, what about IE-based scripting? No. So at the, at the moment, BlazeMeter does not support IE-based scripting. Uh, another question in terms of the BlazeMeter, is it the same user logging in or on different users? Not quite sure if I understand that. But again, as I showed you, you can have, based on your script, multiple users logging into your backend with a CSV file. Uh, Ah, another question, what about how do I handle certificates in JMeter using the WebDriver sampler? Excellent question. Uh, that is possible, but it's beyond the scope of today's session. We do have the ability for specific clients to actually override uh, JMeter parameters or certificates, whatever. It's an advanced feature that you need to talk to us in order for us to turn it on. But we can handle whatever it is that you need in terms of JMeter or WebDriver. So there's quite a few other questions. Uh, unfortunately, we ran out of time today. But I will say uh, that uh, if you want, you can have somebody get back to you with more questions or even a one-on-one -on -one demo. I wanted to thank you all for your time today. And don't go away, because we have a really quick survey at the end of today's session, which is coming right up. So again, thanks, everyone. If you have additional questions, you can send an email to info.blazemeter.com and we can even set up a demo just for you. Thanks.